My understanding was that he signed up as a special constable being a member of the bourgeoisie of the sort of Winnipeg upper middle classes and came out of that experience a socialist. That was the radicalizing moment for him. Spry is shaken by being on the wrong side of history in the Winnipeg general strike. But his marks and his work on the student newspaper and student council win him a Rhodes Scholarship to Oxford. That Oxford experience opened him to the world, but it also gave him a confidence to, to, um, to tackle that world and to, to say, yes, I can actually uh, affect the course of events. Spry rallies his Canadian club contacts across the country to show the government their support for a Canadian public radio system. But well, we had our key men in each Canadian city. And with a telegram or two, we could get a lot of action from it. But our greatest ally was the undoubtedly anxious, disturbed, and alert Canadian public opinion at that time on this subject. His understanding of the dilemma of the state versus the United States, the dilemma for Canadian culture, meant that he was sort of like the architect for all of our cultural industries, for the foundation on which they sit, for an understanding of culture as both a nation-building thing as well as uh, an industry-building thing. He propagated the faith, the faith in mankind, the average worker, the average person, the person who was good and thoughtful and considerate, the good neighbor policy. As I grow up and realize all these things that he's done, Medicare and CBC, that's inspiring. You think, okay, well, this is something that you can do with your life. <laughs>